Austin lineup. Heinsohn and Havlicek, Sam Jones, Larry Secret, and Bill Russell. And Nick Barnett is all alone. Two points. That's the seventh point for Barnett, the backcourt man. Ian Hazard of the backcourt men with Nelson and West. Excuse me, West, one of the backcourt men. Nelson and Gene Wiley completing the Laker lineup. Freddie Schaus, who's coach of the Lakers, Hamlet check commits the foul, and Walt Hazard will go to the line. That's the first foul on Hamlet check for Boston. Casey Jones, direction Larry Siegfried has three, Casey has two, Bill Russell has two, Los Angeles, Jerry West has two, and Walt Hazard is shooting. Will, talking about picks, uh, frankly, I expected the L.A. to be doing a lot more picking for Jerry West than they have up to now. Actually, it isn't so much that Jerry's had a bad first quarter. They've been able to overplay him without the ball, and he hasn't been receiving it. Oh. I think we're going to see much more of uh, this picking as the game goes on with the thought of trying to get a mismatch uh, on Jerry West, trying to force a forward to guard him, and of course this makes it a bit easier. Tom Heinsohn was fouled by Don Nelson. It's 48 to 36. Six minutes, 15 seconds left in the first half. Havlicek steals another. Larry Siegfried, LaRusso, on the chase, along with Hazard. Secret fouls. Siegfried from Ohio State. LaRusso committing the foul. 49-36. And the native of Shelby, Ohio, two for two there. 50 to 36. Six minutes left in the first half. Siegfried now has eight points. to 38. Sam Jones. Have a check and then Russell. That's been a combination. A good one for the Celtics this year. Russell and Russell. Sam Jones. Jim King. King giving uh, Jerry West a rest. Gene Wiley and Barnett, Hazard waiting at midcourt. 52-38, Boston by 14, Barnett. Fred Schaus told me before the game, Barnett was still uh, bothered a great deal with that grind injury, Chris, and uh, he's the boy that has to carry a major part of the offensive load with Elgin Baylor out. Right, Bob Cousy. Barnett making his ninth point. Here's Sam Jones. Heinsohn. Russell and Sam Jones. Heinsohn trying to save, knocks it out of bounds. Our official, Earl Strom, has what looks to be a broken left thumb. This game is even tough on the officials because it's <laughs> not contact sport, right? Right. Oh, uh, an elbow. They're still at it. <laughs> yes, they are. As the whistle blows here in the second quarter, there's timeout on the court with the score. Celtics 52, Los Angeles 40. Back again at Boston Garden with approximately 4 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the first half, the Celtics lead by 12 points, 52 to 40. And there's the missile. It's been used in a lot of games in the NBA, and now we're down to the final series for the World Championship. The first 
of a best of seven series. Here are the Los Angeles Lakers. This is a team that has uh, tremendous fan support on the uh, West Coast, including the uh, motion picture colony like Doris Day and Dean Martin and Jack Kramer of tennis. And you know, Bob, yesterday on our Major League Championship baseball game, the Mets and the Giants, Leo DeRocher was commenting how much he enjoyed basketball. Right. Well, as you mentioned, Chris, uh, it's certainly taken L.A. by storm and uh, uh, many, many of the Hollywood figures that uh, have been uh, coming into games as often as possible and cheering the home team on. So if any of them are asleep, we'd like to wake them up to so watch this game. Sam Jones, Gene Wiley of Los Angeles, the Jim King. Barnett was all alone, too late to get it to him, as West now is back in the lineup. Meanwhile, he tries the rebound. Heinsohn. Larry Secret. <laughs> Traveling call. This game up to now, Chris, has uh, been very simply the backboard control. L.A. is just getting one shot, and the Celtics are controlling that offensive board. Nice with that rebound to Sam Jones. West with a quick hand, stealing, passing to King. Siegfried, Heinsohn. Wilder to King. Two on one. 52 to 42. The Celtics by 10 as we have three minutes left in the first half. Sam Jones. Adlicek. And there you see the bandaging on Earl Strom's left hand. He broke that thumb in the last Baltimore-Los Angeles game when the Lakers won the Western Division Championship. Barnett commits the foul. Havlicek will shoot as Heinsohn now goes to the Celtic bench. Sanders is back in. Tom Sanders, you see him on the far side of the uh, foul lane, number 16. Next to him, LaRusso and Barnett. Bash is the uh, happiest man out there, Chris, in the sense that uh, he doesn't have to guard Elgin Baylor. He gets that on un enviable task normally, so I'm sure he's pleased about not chasing uh, Elgin for the playoffs. Right. Jerry West over at Siegfried. Wiley. Gene Wiley. It's 54 to 44. The basket is credited to Jerry West. That's his sixth point of the first half with about two and a half minutes left. Here's Jim King. Bill Russell to Havlicek. Siegfried, Havlicek. Havlicek now becomes Boston's leading scorer. Comes off the bench and what a money player. The best sixth man in basketball, Chris. Gets his 11th point of the game. It's 56 to 46. Less than two minutes remaining in the first half. Secret. Russell. Bob, that's what hurt us a whole lot. You know, the Celtics being able to hit the open man whenever, whenever possible. We would collapse and try to help out on Sam Jones, and they would always hit the open man. Apple check for Siegfried. All right, well, I think it's been said many times that, that the key to the Celtics' success, uh, well, excuse me, has been the, the offensive distribution they get from everyone on the team. You can't key on any one man, otherwise someone else will come along and kill you. Rudy LaRusso on a great job in defense now tries to score. And it's foul by Bill Russell. Rudy LaRusso. And Russell now has three personals with a minute and ten seconds remaining in the first half. Well, uh, actually, the Celtics got in a foul trouble in a number of the Philadelphia games. And in the case of Russ, again, I thought 
Uh, this enabled you to move to the basket a, a lot more. Is this yeah. bigger than your thinking? Well, definitely. This is what we tried to do. We tried to get Russell in foul trouble the first quarter, so we were able to do a lot more driving, and I could turn in a lot more. We were very lucky in one game getting Sam Jones in uh, early foul trouble. That helped us a lot. Well, this is the penalty that Selleck had to uh, pay for that aggressive defense. There again, the firing away tactics of the Celtics have added to us at 60 to 49. The Los Angeles Lakers. Dick Barnett. Foul. I tell you, Bob, when I, when I was the most happy when when Casey Jones was sitting on the on the bench because he was really he was really a lot of trouble for me. All right. Well, he's the guy that would double team you in that hole and. Uh, Again, you have less to worry about. That's enough. You don't want to have to worry about Casey. As Rudy LaRusso committed an offensive foul, Boston got possession, and they've added two more, 62 to 49, with 35 seconds left in the first half. Here's Jerry West, driving on Havlicek. Look at the fake. And West trying to uh, steal it away. Boston's ball now in the final 25 seconds of the first half. Siegfried into Sam Jones. Final second of the first half. Sanders, Russell, Havlicek, Siegfried, and Sam Jones in the lineup looking for that last shot before the horn sounds ending the first half. It's Barnett, West, Wiley, LaRusso, and King in the Laker lineup. Russell, five seconds to go. Havlicek! 18 points for Havlicek. And there's the horn. That's the end of the first half with the score. Boston started the second half, 64 to 49, Boston in the lead. Bob Cousy now is at the sideline with the dipper, Will Chamberlain. Let's go there. My colleague this afternoon is the man who's come off, I think, one of the most fantastic series that he's uh, had playing fine ball in uh, a seventh game loss to the champion Boston Celtics. Well, everyone's still talking about that controversial last play. Uh, what was the option on the play in the event if the ball couldn't have gotten into Walker? Well, actually, we were probably so nervous, we really never had an option, Bob. We were trying to get the ball on a pick play to Greer for him to shoot a 15-foot jump shot and with the possibility of me guiding it in. But uh, things never quite worked as, you know, like we wanted because of the pressure. But we didn't have an option, you know. If there was an open man, we probably could have passed it to him. For instance, if uh, Havlicek had missed that pass, and that would have left uh, Chet Walker free to shoot the shot. All right, well, of course, we saw Havlicek display this fantastic anticipation and awareness in the first half, and this is what happened with the last play. You can't plan for uh, this type of uh, hustle and, uh, and overcome it all in a few seconds. Tell me, I'm sure all the basketball fans throughout the country are concerned about your future intentions. You mentioned in a, a National Magazine article recently you're thinking about retiring. What are your thoughts at present on that? Well, now I'm in uh, the period where I'm going to do my second, Bob. I have to go to the hospital next week for uh, some observation work, and I'll probably, you know, take the good part of summer to meditate and decide what I will do with my future. You know, uh, the Philadelphia fans have been so great to me, and uh, we came uh, so, so very, very close. I, and I wish we could have won, but uh, I just want to say that, you know, I owe everything to basketball, and uh, the fans have been really, really great to me this year, and I hope maybe that could be back next year. I really don't know. Fine, well. Well, uh, I was just going to say, if we had to do this much more often, I'd get a stiff neck or a stiff arm, but thanks for joining us, and we'll get a chance to chat a bit more in the second half. Now let's get back to Chris again. Okay, Wilton Bomb. Uh, we'll have the start of the second half of the game, but before we do, let's pause five seconds to let our local stations identify themselves. by Rudy LaRusso. It's Boston's ball out of bounds following the tap-off. Sam Jones and Casey Jones are the backcourt men in the corners. We have Sanders and Heinsohn, and this is Bill Russell. Heinsohn knocked it out of bounds, and now Jerry West, who in the first half scored six points, has the ball. He and Dick Barnett are the backcourt men with LaRusso and Leroy Ellis, the corner man, and Wiley, the pivot. It's Boston's ball. West last touching it. In rebounds, Russell had 19 in the first half. Wiley had 11. 
Boston's shooting was 25 out of 65 shots. Los Angeles, 18 of 42. Here now is Barnett. Bill Russell, his 20th rebound, Casey Jones, Heinz. Sanders getting a beautiful lead from Heinz and Jerry West. Gets his fourth field goal for the ball game, eight points now. Casey Jones. Heinzen. Beautiful assist from Heinzen to Russell. Basket counts and he's fouled on the play, Bob Cousy. Chris, that was that pick play that we mentioned earlier in the game where they attempt to uh, set up the mismatch. Just as soon as Russell sets the pick up, the man goes by, he goes long to the basket. And the option is if the man does not take the jump shot, he gives the return pass to Russ for the dunk, which you just saw happen. And LaRusso committed the foul, his third, as we look at Barnett. It's 66 to 51 after a minute and a half of the third quarter. Barnett with his 15th point of the ball game, 66-53. Casey Jones. The basket counts. And on the play, Bill Russell was fouled. He'll get one shot. Wiley committing the foul. That's Wiley's second. Well, it looks like they've been told to uh, keep Russ away from that uh, offensive board. Definitely, definitely. So uh, even though I three did a great, great job on the following step, that's what they're trying to do right now, keeping away from the board. 68 to 53 after two minutes of play, and Jerry West is fouled on the play by Tom Sanders. 